So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be presenting Benchbot, which is a Python application that automates OSVVM test bench template generation for VHDL DTs, and it's primarily targeted towards FPGAs. And it's present. Uh, this will be presented by myself. I'm Arya Sharma. I go to Mission San Jose High School in Fremont, California, USA. And I'm probably the youngest presenter here today, so uh, please have mercy on me. Yeah. Oh, no. and, <laughs> and I was also supposed to present with Audra Vasudevan Srinivasan, but unfortunately he couldn't come today for this presentation. And I would also like to tr thank my contributors and mentors, uh, Ajita Kumari Venkatesan and Deepa and Deepa and Anil. And Anil is actually right here. Yeah. And yeah. So um, the agenda for today is pretty simple. Uh, first, we're just going to go over an introduction and talk about domain and give an introduction to Benchpot. And then we're going to be talking about YAML usage in Benchbot and why we're using YAML and how we're actually using generative AI to create the YAML files. And after that, I'll just give some quick examples of Benchbot, which would include like screenshots and things. And uh, I'll talk about the value of Benchbot and why it's useful. And then I'll just like at, after that, I'll just give a quick summary and we can do like a short Q&A. Okay, so firstly, let's talk about like VHDL designs. So there's an exciting and ever-expanding chip design ecosystem. And as you can see by this purple graph, uh, you can see that the, there's an increasing trend in the global FPGA market. And the forecasted market size by 2032 is actually estimated to be around $13.5 billion. And the market will grow at a CAGR of approximately 7.8%. And in this second bar graph, uh, uh, it shows research that was conducted by Siemens and Wilson Research. And it shows us that uh, VHDL is really popular and over 60% of FPGA designs actually use VHDL. And so VHDL growth is driven by these following emerging fields. Uh, so there's quantum computing, DSPs, AI accelerators, inference engines, and aviation space. So now designs are very complex, so we can't just solely rely on board testing. If we were to solely rely on board testing, it would become very inefficient and it would be very expensive. So that's why we need modern test bench libraries that are tailored for VHDO. And uh, some of the most popular modern test bench libraries that are tailored specifically for VHDL include OSVVM, as you guys saw in the previous presentation, and there's VUnit and UVVM and CocoTB, which is Python based. But the main focus for Benchbot is going to be OSVVM, which stands for Open Source VHDL Verification Methodology. Okay, so what is Benchbot? Benchbot uses VHDL, which is VHSIC, hardware description language, and is used for modeling and simulating digital systems and circuits. So it's, using, it's used for designing FPGA and ASIC hardware, and as well as documenting FPGA and ASIC hardware, and also synthesizing hardware. And it's known for its syntax and semantics, which is really robust and really well-defined, and it also has really verbose syntax, and is often, often uh, aided by handy utilities, which makes it much easier to use. And so OSVVM stands for Open Source VHDL Verification Methodology. And like I mentioned in the previous slide, it's a library that's used for building VHDL test benches. And Benchbot, which is our application, is coded in Python. And since Python is like uh, very user-friendly and very readable, uh, that's why we decided to use it for Benchbot. And uh, it's bench, so Benchbot is a Python bot that is used to generate these templates for test benches uh, using, in, uh, using OSVVM uh, libraries for building the VHDL test benches. OK, 
Okay, so Benchbot is written in Python, uh, more specifically in Python 3.0, and it is, uh, the code is open source, so it's free for everyone to use. Uh, I can like put up a GitHub link later, I can send it to someone if someone needs it, and since it's open source, people can contribute to it, and people can also use the code for their own applications. And what Benchbot does is it reads in a YAML file that contains all the DET information, and then it outputs a ton of files and the test benches and all that. And so the Benchbot generates 100% clean code for test bench entity, um, test bench architecture, and also clean code for all DET ports declared locally, DET instantiation, uh, the hookup is taken care of, and basic OSVVM scoreboard, and functional coverage model for all ports. And as a bonus, it also uh, generates clean code for a directed test template, a random test template, and it also adds a watchdog simulation utility just to make sure your test doesn't run forever. Uh, so this Python app uh, both takes in a YAML file as input and also creates all these uh, things you see on the screen as an output. Okay, so Benchbot, uh, the main feature of Benchbot is that it generates OSVVM compliant VHDL code. And the code is properly formatted and properly indented and it contains useful comments which helps increase the user uh, friendly service and a friendly interface and makes it much easier for users to use. And it also provides enough space inside of the template for the user stimuli. And the templates were tested uh, extensively on model simulator, which uh, show, like helped show us that the templates were actually of good quality. And uh, it should also work on other, other simulators like Excelium and VCS, but currently that's to be verified and it's currently a work in progress. So we're currently working on that. And it also allows batch simulations with varying parameters to explore different test scenarios. And as I mentioned before, it has a user-friendly interface, which is always important for any application. And it also provides templates and wizards for new users to quickly generate effective test benches. Okay, so this is an example of a YAML file uh, used for generating a test bench template for a debounce circuit. And as you can see, uh, we can very well define the attributes uh, attributes of the design, like the name of the ports, the direction of the ports, and the width of the ports, and so on. And so the user can provide all the relevant information about the design using the YAML file, and then uh, it would output all the files in the test bench. And uh, also on the right-hand side, side, you could see that there's an example of the tree structure of YAML. Okay, so the key components of the YAML file are the entity, the libraries, and the ports. So the entity contains the name of the VHDL entity. So in this ca case, that's a debounce. Uh, the VHDL libraries are that are required for the entity are in the library section. And in this case, you can see the IEEE libraries and also the ports. It's like a list of the ports and each of them have attributes like the direction, the kind, the name, the type, and the width. And you can see here like the direction of the port is like in, the kind is clock, and so on. So libraries contain the VHDL library dependencies and the file paths that are required for the entity. And the ports define a list of ports that are used in the VHDL entity, uh, each with the several described and several subkeys. And uh, like P direction, contains the direction of the port, a P kind contains the type of the port, which would be like clock, reset, port, and P name uh, contains the name of the port, P type has the, de the data type of the port, like standard logic, standard logic vector, and P width contains the width of the port. And so Sorry. Okay. So we also use generative AI, such as ChatGPT, 
and Gemini and Meta AI, uh, mainly ChatGPT, and we can use those to actually generate the YAML files for a given VHDL DAT. So uh, it just takes a few iterations and a few prompts, and you, uh, you can use those to train the generative AI engine to our needs. So we can fine tune the generative AI to our needs by giving it prompts to generate the YAML files. And once it, once it done, it was smooth to generate YAML for medium sized designs. So we tried that for over 25 designs and it generated smoothly and it was a uh, great quality for the YAML. And we also generated over 2000 lines of YAML so far. Okay, so these are some examples of functional coverage watchdog files uh, generated by Benchpot. And as you can see, the indentation is very clear. The comments are very clear. So this is what like I was talking about, the user like friendliness. So it's, it's good for the user. And also the entire code is actually 100% auto-generated. And the watchdog and the functional coverage are auto-instantiated as well for you. OK, so in this example, the debound circuit is the DUT. And the DUT was coded in 160 lines of VHDL, and it has 20 lines in ports. And after feeding the YAML files as input, uh, all these files were generated. All these files that you see over here were generated. And uh, the files include the functional coverage files, the simulation utilities, uh, direct to test and test fetch templates. And the benchmark also generates scoreboard, scoreboards, as you can see over here. And uh, remember, all the files are 100% auto generated by Benchbot, uh, and the user can modify them as needed. And uh, also, it's important to note that uh, the Benchbot doesn't just generate uh, the test benches, it generates templates for the test benches. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. And um, so previously, Benchbot was known as PyVHD, but we re refactored it into Benchbot. Uh, we are in the process of making the code modular so it is easy to manage and modify. And we also made sure that the generated code adheres to all the coding guidelines. And also, we're trying to modify it into class based object oriented programming, which is currently a work in progress. And we're also adding support for other simulators like NVC, uh, Icarus, and com other commercial tools. And one of the goals we have is to run it on public repository VHDL designs, and the target is 50 plus small designs. Okay, so in summary, uh, Benchbot tries to contribute in the world of open source silicon development. Uh, by providing a tool to generate test bench templates for complex VHDL based designs. And I want to give a sincere thanks to my high school, Mission San Jose High School, for providing support as needed for me. And uh, I also want to give a sincere thanks to Ajita, Deepa, and Anil for helping mentor and contributing so much. And I also want to thank uh, ORCONF and the Fosse Foundation for giving us this opportunity to showcase her work. Okay, thank you. All right, well, since uh, this is shouted out, I'll repeat it. Um, you said you were using a uh, generative AI model to, to generate some YAML. Have you considered just using the VHDL code to extract the interfaces from there? Sorry, so, so the question was, you're using generative AI to generate the YAML. Um, but have you considered extracting it from the VHDL interface definition? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, we haven't, but we can try that in the future. Right now, we're currently just like using generative AI to like, like just create the YAML files. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, you said uh, you've got this custom YAML format. I was just wondering why you wrote the custom YAML format and not something like IP exact, and it's not perfect. The question is why a custom YAML format instead of IP exact, for example? Hmm. Uh, I'm not completely sure. I think my mentor would be able to answer that. Yeah, I think. Uh, I would think oh, up. So can I give you the mic? Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, IP exec, uh, can you hear? Yeah, yeah. So IP exec is definitely a good suggestion, but I think we just wanted to get started with something simple and like, you know, get the ball running. But we want to actually, that, wh what you are saying is that is something which we considered. And definitely we are thinking about like, you know, to make it more and more user friendly. Why we considered YAML? Because we thought with YAML we can just define some parameters and just get it going actually. IP exec, I have dealt with so many issues in the past. I'm not complaining, but IP exec is a different ball game. I'm not saying it's a yeah. great example. Yeah. <laughs> or I can hold. Sure. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, like we're so, trying. Yeah, sorry, we're just trying, repeat oh, yeah. the question. Yeah. So you were asking like which generative AI we use. Like, do we use Meta AI and ChatGPT and like other AIs? But I think we're we're like trying different ones. But I think ChatGPT works the best, and that's the one we use the most. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's okay. thank Aria again. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.